What is up YouTube and welcome to episode 63 of the Chaos Daily. We're in the office because the printer is printing. You can probably hear it. Um, so hopefully the audio is okay in here. I haven't tested this yet. I just did the thing with my tripod and the lights and it looks amazing. I love it. It's so versatile now. Like I can do this here. I can go outside. I can I can record pretty much anywhere now that my recording and lighting and everything is just good. So good. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, the albatross is still printing. I'm printing the wing tips now. I decided to skip ahead to the tips and see how they would print because I haven't tried those yet. Um, and then there's one more wing section and then I've got to reprint the tail. And I'm reprinting the ailerons because when I printed the ailerons, I printed them vertically like this. And when I went to go put the new wing section that I just printed earlier today all together, um, I discovered that they're too short. Yeah, the, the dimensionality of them has changed somewhat. Um, they weren't a very good print to start with. So I'm thinking there was a lot more compounding error because they're split into smaller sections that if each one is just a little bit shorter, once you get past two of them, then the point at which the tabs that are in between along the length of the aileron that helps support the, the carbon fiber rod, they don't meet up with the slot for the tab anymore. So yeah, I'm gonna have to reprint those, but I'm gonna reprint them now with my new methodology, which is to print all the wing sections on the trailing edge with a little bit of a lean. And that way I can use the support material to support the internal ribs so I put the supports lined up where the ribs are and that seems to be working really well that's where I've had my success so far um, I will probably do a video on my other channel explaining the appropriate way to support wings in resin printing not that anyone would really care I'm the only one that's doing resin printing planes at the moment but in the future if somebody else if the price comes down if more people get into resin printing RC planes then I have cataloged all of the information they need to get started so today we are going to look at what we're doing next so I want to go back to the long easy and finish the long easy the long easy is a smaller plane i have the battery for it uh, the, the edf is on order i had to cancel my order with banggood because it was discontinued and out of stock when i bought it and then they later on like they didn't even tell me i had to go find out what was going on and they go oh no that's discontinued we're not doing this product anymore i'm like well can i get a refund and they're like well you can choose from all of these other and i'm like no i don't want those edfs i ordered this one i want this one i mean you can understand i, I explained the reasons why i wanted that particular edf in previous episodes of the Chaos Daily. So um, yeah, I was like, this is no bueno. And I thought, hang on a minute. AliExpress does RC stuff. So I went to AliExpress and I searched for the same goddamn EDF and there it is, cheaper and in stock from multiple suppliers. Hello, like what's going on? Banggood couldn't just go, oh shit, we're out of stock, but we still have back orders. Maybe we should just, you know, buy the billet and fulfill these orders using a, a set um, third party service. Nah, they don't do that. So I got them to give my money back and then I reordered it on AliExpress. So the EDF should be arriving soon. And the battery and the ESC are already here. So we are good to go on that front when it comes to components for the long easy. But here's the big but. There are some things I want to work out first. When I designed the Long Easy, I had, I was clueless. Let, let's, let's be honest here. I had no idea about resin printing planes because nobody did. And through printing the Albatross, I have learned so much from printing the Albatross. It is scary how many things I've discovered, how many new techniques I've developed. Uh, even talking with Soriatek and Piopoli and uh, talking about, because the, the whole subject of printing thin walled objects, um, which doesn't just apply to resin printed RC planes, we have to have thin, well, thin walled objects. Um, they're, they're fascinated by it because everyone prints models and they're at minimum a millimeter thick or half a millimeter or 0.3 millimeters for if they use very thin support materials for miniatures and stuff. Nobody is printing full on big objects that are continuously thin walled all across in places and then you have some support structure throughout the inside. Um, so nobody's doing this kind of printing and Soriatek are really liking this, this effort that I'm going under and that's why they kind of sponsored me. They provide me with all the resin um, and that's fantastic. I love Soriatek. Thank you very much. The resins are amazing. So going forward, I need to now pretty much take the long easy and start from scratch. I need to remove all the internal and structure, go back to when I created the form and before I chopped it up into pieces for printing because I want to chop it up differently. Even with the albatross, I think I might, if I did it again, I would do it a different way again, especially the wings. Um, now that I print stuff on the trailing edge, I would make the wing sections longer so that they would fit in the length, the, the longest length of the build plate. So I would have sh um, less sections, but longer sections because you don't want to print too tall but if you're lying the wing over on its trailing edge then you can make them longer depending on the width of your vat 
with this in mind, um, the, the thing I'm thinking of is, okay, so the Long Easy is mostly fuselage. There has two wings on the back and the canards at the front and fuselage is basic and easy and then you got the EDF shroud. So I'm not going to really learn much there when I still feel like there's a lot more to learn when it comes to printing wings. Just wing sections. Um, never mind like just a, a flying wing or anything like that. I mean like wings for anything. Wings for the Long Easy, wings for the Albatross. There's still more for me to learn. I'm not having full 100% success. Even these last two sections that are printed, um, there's some minor errors in there. Um, one of the tabs for the ailerons didn't print, that failed. Uh, that could have been a support material issue. I don't know. What I'm thinking is, do I work on the Long Easy and try and battle my way through that when I feel like I, I still have more to learn? There's still, there's still, like, the reason why I started the Albatross is because I had the components and it was an easy enough structure and design for me to learn from. It was a good starting point. So I think I need to probably go even more basic. Let's build a flying wing. Now there are a couple of options that I've been looking around. Jotham, one of my patrons, he, he loves flying wings. He loves the Prantle wings. Uh, the Prantle wing is a Proverse Yor aircraft, uses specific airfoil design and um, sweep and taper and all that stuff so that it generates a balanced lift ellipse curve over the wing's span uh, and all sorts of fancy interesting stuff. I leave a I will leave loads of links in the description for this episode to seminars, um, discussions, uh, things like all on YouTube. Otherwise, go check out my Aerospace Innovations playlist. I have gone through YouTube and found loads of really great videos with really good technical information about aviation, aerospace, um, when it comes to material science, aerodynamics, you name it, it's all down there. Go check out the description down below for some of those links. And um, there's so much to learn down there. So what I'm trying to say is, do I want to work on the long easy or do I want to make a flying wing? Or do I want to make another glider? Because I love gliders. I have a bunch of gliders in my cupboard. I, if you don't know, I, I used to do discus launch gliding where you, there's a little tab on the end of the one of the wings and you spin around like a ballerina and you, you eat the glider into the air and you just fly it around and grab a couple of foots, the thermals and then eventually it comes back down and then you do your ballerina trick and you send it back up. I love gliders because of their simplicity. They are the the essence of flight boiled down into its simplest terms. Um, but so that's why I went through to the Albatross. The Albatross, I plan on in future using it as sort of like a test platform, try out new ideas. Say if I want to try a different kind of wing, I can just design a new wing off the same wing root airfoil and have wings that have got little feathery bits on the end like a bird or all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I really want to try that sort of stuff out. There are a couple of options that I want to look at. I want to maybe look at a Prantle wing because Jotham really loves them and he would love a resin printed Prantle wing. We've discussed this in our Discord server. Um, and yeah, I would probably print one and send it to him and he'd buy it and that sort of stuff. Um, that'd be really cool. But I, st I, still f I still feel like there's more to learn about just general wing design for resin printing and how to go about it, what are the best practices and all of that sort of stuff. So I want to do a bit of both. I want to do a flying wing and I want to do a glider. Now there's this really interesting glider slash flying wing called the Alto Stratus, which was a sailplane flying wing developed by, I forget his name, his name will be here. Again, links in the description, bunch of PDFs and stuff that I found, two of them really, down below, um, check those out. There's, there's very little information about this particular plane. Uh, it was a five meter glider model that they made up. Uh, it's sitting in a museum somewhere, it got a few flights. It was a really interesting design. It looks very much like a bird's wing. I really love that organic design from nature sort of look when it comes to aircraft and that sort of thing. And then there's another thing I want to try out because if I'm not doing the long easy and I'm going to be working on another EDF, then I'm going to have an EDF. So whatever plane that I design next is going to be built around the EDF power system, the 6S, the EDF, all of that stuff. It's all going into that plane. Here's what I'm thinking, right? Um, I don't really want to get, I will get back to the long easy at some stage when I know more. The same goes for the Draco. Going through this whole process has told me a lot and I'm starting to think that a lot of the aspects of the Draco just might not be possible, not from a material standpoint or a design standpoint, but literally just a printing restriction standpoint. Some of the things that I've designed in the way that I've designed them, I do not think they will actually print like that. Whereas before I did, and I was right to assume that before because I didn't have a freaking glue. So at some point I will get back to the long easy. I want to build a sailplane, another sailplane, but I don't want to use a tail. I want to build 
a flying wing, but I don't particularly want to build a Prantle yet. Uh, it want, needs to have aspects of the Prantle with Proverse Yaw and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I also really like the idea of blended wing bodies. Now, because we're using an EDF, and I'm coming back to this, uh, because we're using an EDF, that would work really well, because then I can have an EDF pod, or I can have a, uh, we can look into some of the aerodynamics that are involved with boundary layer intakes. Boundary layer intakes is a very complex subject, and it requires an awful lot of aerodynamics study of the vehicle in CFD. Um, so you can see what the aircraft's aerodynamic boundary layer profiles are before you design the pod. And then you, from that, you go back in, you design a pod on the aircraft, you rerun the simulations, you see how the airflow and boundary layer affects around the intake um, and all that sort of stuff. It's a very progressive way to do it. There are more mathematically and complicated ways to do it. I am just not going to do because I don't know the math involved and I don't have a team of people working on the problem. We are going to build some bastard variation of a blended wig body EDF sailplane Prantle flying wing modular. That's another thing. When I was looking at blended wing bodies, I came across this great seminar, again, link in the description, of uh, the guy that worked on blended wing bodies back in the early 90s, late 80s and onwards. Um, and it's at one point in the seminar, he's talking about how they would design a blended wing body system, a modular system where the wings were one piece, then you had a split section that would hold the two engines and then you can either put the wings in those two split sections together and then you got the nose that goes on the front or you could split the sections and then there was like a t-shaped section that comes down the middle with a third engine and an additional spacer for the nose and then the nose goes on and then there was another one which had a larger t-section that goes in the middle so there was variations of the same design with the same wing profile um, but they had different internal fuselage structures that sort of stacked in like a, a Lego block set or something. Like it was a modular design system for her flying blended body wing. And I was like, oh, that's in cool. That's cool. I want to do that. Whether or not I can do that in RC scale, I don't know. We're looking at um, material constraints with carbon fiber and assembly and all those stuff. But that would be really cool if I made a large scale aircraft like that. But that would require molds and composites and fiberglass. And we're not there yet hopefully one day. It's very expensive to do that. So we're going to look at that. Blended wing body, EDF, sailplane, soaring, possibly modular so I can, I can make changes to it uh, and we can develop this system of resin printing RC planes further. It's been a lot of me talking, talking heads sort of stuff. Hopefully the scenery was better and more interesting. Um, I'm trying to do more movement and waving around so it's more interesting for you guys to watch. Um, but we'll leave it there for today's episode. I'm going to go edit this video and put all of that information, pictures and stuff on the screen so that you can see what I was doing. So as always, I've been Chaos. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you watch the video twice. Go check out my other channel and subscribe if you're not. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to this one and to my new channel. There'll be videos going up there soon, much better than this Chaos Daily. This is sort of like a vlog channel. So until next time, expect the unexpected and I will see you guys later. And a special thank you to all my patrons that help support the channel. If you would also like to support the channel, there's a link in the description.